Marquette, Devon, Burton, the saint, and the sinner. Oh, today we got, we got one of the debates of the century. Oh, it's the big homie, the one and only, Fax Kellerman, Stephen A. Pimp. Oh, and I'm debating uh, four people at once. And we are going to do the kind thing of letting them introduce themselves for they know themselves better than I do. And we would be thankful if you would all share your name and your educational background. Briefly, we don't need to know what elementary school you went to and perhaps your position in this uh, relationship that you all have maybe when you came in. And once everyone gets their uh, introduction out, then we'll lay the ground rules and then we'll get this work. Sounds good. Peace and blessings. I'm Rakem Sekou, uh, BS in industrial engineering, master's in business. From Howard, both of them? Uh, NC State Engineering, Howard Grad School. Neat. Hi, my name is Karina Neri Sekou, business in um, business administration at Rollins College in Orlando, Florida. Hi, my name is Kenya K. Stevens. This is my husband, my co-wife, and my other husband. And I went to Howard University with a major in early childhood psychology. Hi, I'm Tiger Millstone. So I have a degree from the streets, but uh, I've got a background, criminal justice, aviation, and accounting. The people I know who have degrees from the streets don't quite resemble you, brother, but uh, we'll get into it in a little bit. I didn't get your name. It wasn't quite clear. Would you repeat that? Tiger Moonstone. Tiger Moonstone. Sir. Boy, that sounds like a potion. Somebody that mixed up on the, one of the reservations. Man, okay. you know, so from the reservations, nothing but good stuff mixed up in here. <laughs> okay, okay. Beautiful thing. Well, I commend you all for being willing to come on the platform and have this discussion. Undoubtedly, the last discussion I think went left, and we'll kind of review that. One thing I will share with the uh, viewers is that following the end of this one, we will be taking that one down. Um, so that's something that I've agreed to, and I am a man of my word. And so once we finish up this within an hour of this one, I'll take down that previous one from public platforms. Um, so I just want to be transparent with everyone about that. Uh, Rakim, I think I made your acquaintance briefly on the phone in the last conversation. It's a, a pleasure to be able to see you here in the flesh. Now, before we get rocking and rolling. Um, Brother, how do we refer to you? What's, how should we refer to you? You're right. You see, I didn't even introduce myself, I guess, because the viewers know me. But my name is Marquette Devon Burton. You can okay. call me Marquette. You can call me the saint. You can call me the big homie. I like the big homie. Big homie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I got a dis degree from the streets, too. Yeah. Anyways, um, so we initially invited Kenya on the show because a lot of people are perturbed by the concept of one woman being passed around like a slobbery blunt. They tend to think is nasty and everybody shouldn't be hitting at the same time. And during the conversation, it reached a bit of a fever pitch, but I think there's still a lot of information we didn't get out. And I'm gonna just hit you with a bunch of questions. We'll go back and forth. So I just wanna lay one ground rule, and actually not even a rule, a norm, something we should try to follow. We're on two different sides. Obviously, there's four of you. There's one of me, which is to say that if I speak for two minutes, then there would be about two minutes on your side, not per person, but collectively. We'll try not to over talk and cut one another off because that's the civilized thing to do. And beyond that, you know, be yourself. Fair? Fair. fair. Sounds fair. Okay. And Rakim, you're the first husband that came into the mix? That's correct. Okay. Now, my question for you all is, I, I guess, actually for the ladies first, and I'll direct this one to Kenya. Have you had sex with multiple men in the same day? Oh, my goodness. I think I have. I think I would enjoy that very much. If I haven't, I would like to. I think that for me, um, sex equals creativity. So the more sexual energy that I have, it's really connected me to source. So when I think of sex, I don't think of penis and vagina. When I think of sex, I think of communing with nature. I can have sex lying on the ground with nature or sex having a conversation with my co-wife or having a conversation with anyone. It really doesn't equate to penis and vagina for me. We practice tantric sex. 
So Tantra is a form of connecting to actual source energy through sexuality. And to be blunt, gentlemen, when you're listening to this, do you think, God, that's some bullshit? Or are you like in your head like, yo, this makes sense? Because when I heard that, I was like, uh, this is some bullshit. You know, when we're talking about sex, we're speaking of copulation, intercourse, penis and vagina. We're not speaking of uh, anything involving spaceships and flowers. Yeah, I mean, that's just how we tend to look at it. I mean, sex for us is not just about penis and vagina. Um, you know, we just we study Tantra. It's a lot deeper than that for us. But I get exactly where you're coming from, Marquette. I mean, I get what you're saying. Most people look at it the way you do. That is basically fucking. It's basically intercourse. Right. And the name is Marquette. Marquette. And if you had a chance to review the last video, that was the same thing that I shared with Kenya. And as communications leaders or coaches, I would hope that we can pick that up at some point. And if you can't pick it up, feel free to drop down to some of the other names that I might go by. <laughs> now, you all live together in the same house? For the most part. Um, so we do a lot of traveling and a lot of engagements elsewhere. But this is what we call home as a community. We're yes. all together. Got you. Now, see, the thing for me, if I was in your home, which obviously I wouldn't be, but if I was a part of this uh, this sex swingers cult that you have here, I feel like my nickname in your house would have to be me first. You know, because when you're running a train on a chick, nobody wants to go caboose, which is the last guy in, right? You know, <laughs> you, you're sticking the fish stick and all that whipped cream that's been left over. That's, I think, what people find viscerally disgusting. Um, so why is it that whereas the majority of the human population finds this to be a vile thing that you two gentlemen are like, sign me up? Well, I would say it's probably because we don't go with the, the visceral uh, explanation that you gave to it. See, having sex is not disgusting. It's not vile. It's lovely. It's great. It smells good. It feels good. And I don't think there's anyone out there that would disagree with me on that. That's but because you're not wait. addressing the question, brother. Like the, the challenge here is I didn't talk about sex being disgusting. You're going off mm -hmm. the rails. I said having sex with the same female in the same day, which your wife says, yes, I have been ran through by multiple guys in the same day. I'm saying when you're one of those guys, you don't find that to be nasty to be poking around in the same orifice where another guy's penis previously was and he ejaculated and now you're poking around in his bodily fluids plus hers. You don't find that to be nasty. That's what I'm asking you. Well, if you're going through and you're saying that just because of the bodily fluid, that that's what makes it nasty? Or is it the concept that you think is nasty? So if let's say you're with a lady and you spit, is that nasty? If your saliva is on her vagina, in her mouth, that's I nasty? I spit on her vagina, bro. Use a friend to eat, bro. I don't be spitting on the vagina, you hear me? But go ahead. So that's what I'm asking. So you, you think that's nasty. If you use your oral anything on a on a person, you use your mouth on them. That to you is is nasty. I asked him last week if he thought that men were nasty or if semen was nasty. What is the nasty part? I think semen is very healing. It, it has lots of it produces oxytocin in the woman. Really wonderful euphoric feelings, a hormonal cocktail. It bonds women with men. I don't know which part is nasty. Got you. So I will tell you that I asked you a question and you actually turn around and basically asked me a question rather than explaining your position, but that's fine. In some reason, it seems though your position is no, I do not find it nasty to put my penis in the same orifice where another male's penis has been and that male has ejaculated there as well. You don't find that to turn your stomach at all. You're comfortable with that. I'm comfortable with any man that I know. So if you're trying to say that, you know, we're running this train because I've not ever been in a train situation with any female. It's always been a one on one sexual experience with every female that I've ever been with. So for this train scenario that you're describing with me, I'm not going to find it nasty because I'm not going to have knowledge of any nasty person being involved with the woman that I was involved with prior to that, unless you're saying that, you know, you're in a situation where your boys are nasty. If so, you might want to check them and be like, oh, you need to go clean your shit up versus 
starting to check this lady. Well, I appreciate your response. That was definitely to the point. Shout out to Castro. He writes, according to her definition, she's having intercourse with you right now, saying, which I think he's saying your definition is so broad that it is without meaning. I can definitely understand that. I think most of us in the West learn sex from pornography. So we think of sex as pornographic or we think of sex as penis and vagina. And I totally understand that. Got you. And you've grown up in the West like we have, I would trust. I have. I just gave it up when I was about 14 and started reading the Tao of sexology, which is more of an Eastern understanding of sex, then studying Egyptian Tantra and then studying Malaysian Tantra or then studying South African and Twa, you know, sexual habits, reading Sex at Dawn, books that take us out of the Western misunderstanding of sex and sexuality. Well, I'm really happy that you all are here because I can assure you, and I'm, I trust you know this, that everything you all are sharing is radically different from anything I've ever said. I believe that. So shout out to you all for that. Blue Lotus writes, a woman with several sexual partners stirs up chaos in her spirit. Spiritually speaking, there's no type of Tantra that can cure that. This is dangerous because a woman is the spiritual powerhouse of the family. Talk to me. Uh, what do you want to say about that? That's her opinion. Correct. We respect that, Blue Lotus. I respect her opinion very much. I feel like the spiritual fa mother of my family. I have three grown children. They're all grown and in college. One works for my company. I have 55 employees. I run four large organizations. We have a publishing company. I don't feel confusion. I feel quite on top of my game, making the money I need to put my children through school, along with my husband's and my co-wife. Gotcha. Now, my curiosity, and it's going back to something that you had said in our last discussion, was that you had started talking about bonobos. And I don't want to get into uh, too much talk about other species, <laughs> but you had mentioned that the children have sex. And it was shared with me a, a <laughs> quotation from you. And let me see if I can actually read it directly. Do you have the, is the link on my email? Yeah. So I want to share a quotation. I don't want to make up anything. But it was a quotation that you had shared something about your start in sexuality. And you know, one of the challenges that I have is that I feel as though you are so sex obsessed and sex centered. And that is a direct result of probably some things that are not good. And my view is that it's coming from trauma. And in this quotation, you write that you started your sexual experience at age eight with a female. Tell, school me on that one, because I think a, a lot of folks, including myself, would find that to be early. Because, oh. you know, I was playing with Lunchables, watching Mr. Rogers, you heard me eating fish sticks, <laughs> and you was taking stiff... <clears throat> Women or yeah. girls? Yeah, apparently. Talk to me. Oh, fingers, maybe. <laughs> no, what what I what I know for sure from coaching thousands and thousands of couples over the past 17 years as my as my husband and I have run our business is that sex is natural and it starts with children very young, plan with each other, cousins, plan house, plan doctor. If you didn't do any of those things, I certainly understand. I did those things and I enjoyed it very much. I know that babies touch themselves, young kids touch themselves. Usually parents say, stop it, don't touch yourself. Like don't touch a part of your body. Like that part of your body is bad or it's wrong to feel sexually rubbing up against the couch or having movements you know, that, that stimulate the clitoris. The clitoris has 8,000 nerve endings. So women start very much earlier than- May I swing you back to the core question, which was, is eight years old too early to have sexual experiences with other human beings? Not in my view. I feel it's natural to explore oh. sexuality at that age. Absolutely. Every it, every it, counsel, every person I've ever coached has done that. I don't know anybody who didn't have you those. You coaching experiences. some special people because when I was eight years old, I was trying to learn how to ride a bike. Uh, it seemed like you was trying to learn how to ride other things. So like this is definitely atypical. Is this agreed among your family here that Eight years old is a good time to get started in the porn I industry. Think, you know, I don't think that it's being said that it, it's a good time. 
I think that it's being said that it's natural to be curious about your body, about the bodies of others. And that just is when it happened for her. I don't think that it's, it, she, we're saying that it's natural eight-year-olds should be having sex. I don't think anybody said that. I think that what she's saying is that the exploration of her body and someone else's body for her was natural at eight. And this was in, in, in your case, a lesbian experience. Yeah, I think that you would call it that. I think we were just curious. Like my girlfriend would have pillows and, you know, our teddy bears. I mean, you should ask the women that you love when they started to experiment with pillows and, and utilizing something to touch their vagina. I think it's just very natural. I have three children. Do you have children? Because all my children. I don't have any children. So oh, I, think, see, I think this is I think this is the root of like really where a lot of this stuff starts from. And a lot of what you'll read by very well recognized scholars will point to sexual trauma in the childhood and how it manifests in certain behaviors later in life. And did you have any experience as a child with someone who is 18 or older or significantly older than you were at the time? Absolutely not. These are my girlfriends. We were in the Barbie club, man. We playing house. We playing doctor. You guys didn't do that. I think boys. I mean, are so me, it sounds like you're trying to make it feel like normal and like up tempo and lighthearted. Oh, but the okay. resounding answer is no, I did not play doctor with people of the same gender and feel them up and engage in. You know, oh, but sexual. you did with somebody of the opposite gender. No, I also did not do that. Not at eight years old. No. No, at eight oh. years old, you know, we were like eating gingerbread cookies and like we weren't trying to like get a nut off. That's not normal. That's what I'm saying to you. Y'all um, didn't play hot and go get it. I'm from Detroit. We play hot and go get it. <laughs> yeah, that was, in, that was in our teenage years, though. That's the that's the yeah. thing is I was in the teenage years. Oh, well. Yeah, like you, you were early in this regard. Okay, we have Emmanuel Cartwright said peace is the same and Elijah Dean situation. Yeah, shout out to the people uh, coming through uh, supporting the work. Now, let me ask you guys this, because a lot of, and I don't want to make it about me, so definitely we're going to read all the questions that are sent in, because I know a lot of these folks have questions for you all, they have fascination. And I think that's why you all are able to come onto platforms, because you do live an alternative lifestyle. My fear about alternative lifestyles such as yours is that it all goes back to pedoph pedophilia, like at the end of the day. And I feel like that was like the sense that I got when you were giving the bonobos examples. Your word was, quote, everyone has sex the men, the women, and the children. And I was like, ah, here we go again. And that's often like kind of the challenges that like the kids are not protected in these scenarios. And now it feels like you're like lighthearted joking about like uh, kids trying to reach orgasm at age eight. When I can tell you that I didn't orgasm for the first time till I was 14. Mm -hmm. So that was like damn near twice as old as you were, which is to say like, I, I find this to be like very young in your case. And I would think that would want to be curious about what motivated that. Sure. So I think there's probably some um, misconception there. I think people are probably listening to that specific term when she says children. You are, again, talking about another species, as you pointed out prior to that. I can speak for myself and probably every other person in this room that there is no thought of pedophilia. That's not at all what polyamory is about. And for anyone that has that perception, they are wrong. That's just not what we're about. If in a polyamorous style relationship, if we are able to have sex, open relations with anyone we choose, why on earth will we ever choose a child? when there are so many beautiful women, so many men, you can choose whomever you want to have a relationship. I'm not choosing any man, but I can choose up to a million women if I want to have sex. Is that the same for you, Rakim? You don't, you don't deal with males? You, you haven't had any gay experiences? No, I don't, I'm not a homosexual and I'm not bisexual. So no, I, I have a lot of experiences with women and it's pretty okay. amazing. Okay, okay. So who's the leader out of you all? The leader of what exactly? So there's four of you right now. You're together as a collective. Yes. Mm -hmm. Who's the leader? I'm the leader of me. Karina's the leader of her. Kenny's the leader of her and Tiger's the leader of him. Very nice. So 
a lot of people are saying that you're, you guys are beta males. Is that a, something you would identify under as a beta male? Like when you're in elementary school, people used to take your Lunchables. Uh, can you can you define a beta male for me? Sure, sure. Let me just get a basic definition that we can find uh, on the internet. Uh, beta male. Beta males are the lieutenants of the sociosexual hierarchy, which is to say they're they're not the top rank. They are fiercely loyal to their alphas, which is to say their leaders. In exchange for this loyalty, they enjoy many of the benefits of high status and position, meaning being associated with the top one. And the alpha would be the leader. So I would say in this case, they would identify the one that's out in front, Kenya, as the alpha. And for my phone call with you, Rakim, when I'd ask you a question directly as a man, she cut you off and started talking over you. And she did it two times. And further, when I pointed this out to you, which was the clear truth, you then pretended as though you were yielding to her, which you did not make that decision because she had already over talked you. It's not like you said, hey, I would like to pass this question to my wife. She just cut you off. And then on the back end, you tried to make it look good. Yeah, I just look at it differently. Like if my wife is going to jump down your throat or defend me or clarify something, I'm all for that. So people in my cipher, people in my group, people I'm connected with, they've got free reign to protect me, to defend themselves, to do what they need to do. I don't take any offense to that. I don't call that yielding or, you know, letting somebody else be the leader. I call that allowing people to do what they got to do in terms of defending or being on the offensive. So it's different for me. So she protected you from me? Well, because I didn't have any background on who you were, I didn't even know what you all were doing, to be honest. But, yeah, I yielded to her so she could let me know what the fuck was going on because I had no idea what you all were doing. I didn't know it was an interview. I didn't know where you were. I didn't know what platform you were on. So, yeah, I, I allowed her to take care of that. So I find I must admit, I find, and I don't no disrespect to who you are, or how you live your life. That's fine. You know, there have to be uh, losers for there to be winners. There has to be somebody at the bottom of the hierarchy for there to be somebody at the top of the hierarchy. I value everyone uh, in the dynamic. But I find it strange that there would even be a concept of her being able to protect you from me. She could even protect herself which is to say she tried to stand up and debate. She lost it and began to melt down, yell and curse. And then she called you for backup. So it, she was basically calling you for backup and then that didn't work. And so you were supposed to be protecting her actually. Her actual language was, you are my protector. And now your language is saying she's your protector. So it seems as though there's a lot of confusion and lack of clarity on roles and hierarchy. Confusion for you. I mean, no confusion for me. I expect my queens to protect me and I'm going to protect my queens. And that's the way it is. And there's different scenarios where they jump in and they do that and scenarios where I jump in and do that. So that's just the way it is. So if you run your trap differently, that's cool. No problem with that, brother. But I expect the people in my site from my tribe to step up and do what they're supposed to do in terms of protecting the entire tribe, period. I find it strange that you all use the term king and queen when in reality, we all know that a king is a singular ruler and the queen is subject to the king. And all within that polity are subject to the king. There is only one king in a nation. Whereas you're sitting right next to another guy who's also slaying your woman. And that's not what kings do. So why even adopt this terminology when it's a lie? Yeah, but what I'm the king of what, brother? What are you saying I'm the king of? What are you referring to? You use the term king. I'm the king of me. That's what I said. I'm in charge oh, of me. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. This is wild. It seems like we keep redefining words. And that's what's scary to me is that we can never find truth when it's like there's a word that there's a clear definition in the dictionary. And then you say, I'm the king of me. So what's what did I say I was the king of before, brother? Clarify it for me. When you were in the last phone call in which your wife exposed you to be one who yields to her, especially when she starts to raise her voice, you said, as a king. Right, as a king. Without a doubt, I am a king. So where do I contradict myself? I'm waiting to hear that from you. A king is a word that you did not create. It had a definition before you were even born. A king is a ruler. A king is not a king of the self. A king is a king of a nation state. What did I say I ruled, brother? Where am I contradicting myself? Osman writes, how does it make you feel after your wife gets her back broke by old dude on the far left? Yeah, not, I want you to answer my question. Don't get confused by these guys on their mother's Internet making comments. 
What, how did I confuse myself or contradict myself? Because you're lying. A king is not one who is the king of themselves. If that's the case, we can all go around saying we're kings and queens. You're so perverting the definition. Don't you're, interrupt me. You just asked me a question. A king is one who rules over others. Generally, those others are referred to as subjects, and they are subject to the leadership of the king, i.e. the domination of the king, and the king is unquestioned. A king is not like a president who can be questioned. A king is a single autocratic ruler. If you don't understand that, I'm going to need you to go back into university because you didn't get your basics together. So either we can stop playing games or we can carry on. So I did not contradict myself. I never said I was a king of any particular person or thing. So you made that up. Next, you question. said you were a king by definition of the word. I, I never contradicted myself. I want you to say how I contradicted myself. You you failed to you, say that. You've already been exposed for contradicting yourself, and okay. now you're playing with the definition of words. I'm not playing. So we won't agree with that. We we won't agree on that. Um, but do you have any response to the gentleman's question about how you feel? I, I imagine you don't feel anything, right? Yeah, I don't have a response. I mean, you're talking about guys on here probably not getting any pussy. They're probably not making any money. Why would I be concerned about what they're talking about? Like, help me understand that. Sure. Well, number one, I think their their thing is that you're sharing yours. So you're getting vagina that's of low value because it's basically everybody can get some. And the reason we say that is not a guess. Kenya was quoted stating, I don't put a limit on the number of partners I have. I have partners here in, is that Ar Archville? Asheville. Asheville. I have partners in other cities. I have my husband. I don't know how many partners I have, which is to say that, well, if these guys on the internet need some vagina, sound like Kenya handing it out and they just need to get in line and get them a piece. <laughs> yeah, I would love to see them try that. That would be amazing to see that. Well, it says that she meets most of the guys she hooks up with on Tinder. So all they would need to do is swipe right, correct? Yes. Well, yeah, they, they would need... just swipe right and they would have to show that they have some credentials. <laughs> right. They have to show they have some masculinity and that they were worthy of that type of thing. I well, really see... doubt that your listeners and your followers are, are in that category. Not brother. That's just my that's my guess. Well, see, I see that you're insulting people. And from the way that you've presented yourself and you being overrun by a female and over talked by a female and saying a female is your protector. I think the kind of gentlemen who follow me, I don't even think you'd say that to their face, to be honest with you. And I saw you two guys in a photo holding her up, and I didn't see one muscle in sight. I'm saying it's yours right now because you're the only gentleman in front of me, my brother. So if they there's, want there's to- a thousand, There's a thousand people watching, and you said me, your followers. We can, we can go that route as well. You said that there's there's a thousand people watching and you said your followers. You didn't say Marquette Devon Burton. I'm saying you're, you're in front of me right now, brother, and I'm talking to you. <laughs> you and I both know that you to me, you're an ant. To okay. me, you're an ant. You you don't have anything on me. I'm the big bad wolf, little buddy. Right, I mean, let's be real here. You are so weak that you have to share a woman who is below average. I am elite. I line my women up and they all are dominated. And you ask them, if all my women are here, you ask them, who's the leader? They say he is. Yet you huh? have no children. Where, where, where is the woman at, brother? Don't interrupt. Where is the woman at? You one second. Have no children, You're no not offer. presenting anything. One, one moment. Don't interrupt. Don't interrupt. You're not presenting anything of proof. One moment. You don't, have to, you don't have to yell. I'm going to give you a chance to speak. You're starting to I'm act like you right, right now. You're, You're not presenting anything. Woman. I will give you a chance to speak. Don't be emotional. Stay calm. I'm and I will calm. yield the floor. You're not presenting anything. I will yield the floor. You see, when people feel as though some truth is getting out and it's touching their heart, they start to react emotionally. If these are all lies, just wait your turn. You will have a chance to speak. Brother, well, you're not presenting anything of, of substance. Now you're, now you're, you're interrupting not. because your feelings are hurt. And that's how I know you're, well, you're not interrupting. A you're not answering you're my questions. The feelings, not the rational. You're you should learn from the brother on the left. You not answer my questions. We can both talk and act like the other person's interrupting, but you're not answering my question. You should learn how to yield when you it's not the time to talk. Can you interrupt him again so he can be quiet? Kenya's you're, good at you're, shutting you down. Kenya, can you shut him down? Well, like what do you think you want to accomplish here? You think you're going to shut me down? Kenya, Kenya can shut you down. Kenya, shut him down so I can finish. I'm on your show. 
And I'm yeah, telling you, him down like you did last time. I'm on your show, and you have no control over the situation, brother. So you always have to keep your own show. You're trying to you're interrupt. You're being me dominated you right now. You have no you're control of your show. This you're segment totally is stuck right now, brother. And you've broken the rule, the holy book of manipulation. Have you ever heard of king, brother. you can't you turn a king, king into a housewife? I might respect what you're saying, but because I you're not a king, I don't. Saints, you see this guy keeps interrupting. Now, here's the funny thing. When his, when his wife started over-talking him, he just shut up. He just shut up. And now they left. Now they ran. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Now, here's the thing. The holy book of niggulations says you can't turn a hoe into a housewife. This is the exact thing they've done. They've tried to turn a hoe into a housewife. That's a thousand percent of what they've done. And we're going to keep on going because we're not done. We have East Dago Ant said green collar like damn he right. He mad. He mad. And the sad thing too is I told him I'm, I'm going to let you speak. Just don't interrupt. And he had to interrupt. But the ironic thing you see when his wife was talking on the last video, he stopped talking because he's being run by a female. And the worst thing about it is as a male, when you run away, it shows your nature. It shows your nature. And when I asked him who's the leader, all of a sudden, nobody's the leader. Well, I'm a boss. I want to talk to a boss. I don't want to talk to the, you know, the, the chauffeur. I don't want to talk to the bottom feeders. Sorry about Why that. You boss. Why'd you have to run away? Why'd you mute me, brother? Because you will not talk over me like a woman. Well, you're not going to mute me like a bitch. You were just muted. It, are, we, are we done talking? Is that what you're saying? You were just muted. Are we done talking? You're going to mute a motherfucker who's on your show. Why, why are you talking over me when you why are, you, not going back why are you muting me? We're not why are you back not answering my question? You, I just told you that you were muted because you were talking over me and no one you're can not hear. Gonna mute me. What, what no do you one think can this? hear. You're so when it's your turn, me. then you talk. That's yeah, all then you is. talk to me. Answer That's the questions I put out there to you and we can talk. That's all there is. Answer the questions I put out and we can talk. You were already being spoken to. Be in silence when you're being spoken to. That's communication. You don't talk at the same time. You I became emotional. Be in silence when you're being spoken to. So this is my question for you. So you're not going to answer the previous questions. Is that what What's you're your saying? What's your question? I'd be happy to. What's your question? I said, where is your substance? Where are your women? Since you're bragging about what you have as a king, can you show us anything? Bank statements, women, anything to show me that you are about that life. Kids. If you're going to bring Yes, let me respond to your question. I brought two of my women. Let me respond here. to your question. You asked me a question. Let me respond to your okay. question. You asked me a question. I will now respond. You just said you are a king. Can you show me something? Bank statements. Women. Uh, women. Things like this. Here's the difference between you and I. My name, you can Google my name if you'd like to. You, you mentioned bank statements. So I assume you're talking about wealth. You can Google my name, which is Marquette Devon Burton, and you'll pull up articles from Forbes magazine. You may have heard of this. You can Google my name and you'll see video footage of me walking around China with like 10 Chinese people from the government following me and filming. You can Google my name and you can find an article that states, Marquette Devon Burton, the next black Bill Gates. You can Google me and find that I went to universities better than yours, Berkeley and Johns Hopkins. And I promise you my net worth is better than all four of you put together, not only now, but back when I was in my early 20s. Let's not play the penis measuring game because yours doesn't measure up. And we already knew that off the rip because you show up here and your wife was out last time begging for the proceeds of the super chats, which are like five and 10 bucks. I would never have my women out jangling a cup trying to get a little bit of change. And lastly, with regards to women, similarly, you can Google my name and I'm sure you can find a lot of photos of me with women, but let me teach you something that your daddy didn't teach you. I am the shield of my women. My women do not wanna be in the public eye. My women are comfortable being in the background because they are in a support role and they are provided for and cared for and led. You, sir, have your women out in the forefront being embarrassed, being degraded, saying idiotic things to the point where she had to request we take down the previous video. Why? Because she was misrepresented? No, because she misrepresented herself. 
because when you come out as a woman going up against a man, you get exposed for what you actually are. And what she actually is, is not housebroken. She's uncivilized, doesn't know how to communicate, and is none of the things she has claimed to be. And you clearly have given her no leadership. And that's why she embarrassed herself. Huh? You okay, brother? You look, seem a little emotional there. <laughs> Oh, you know, I love to get passionate when I'm preaching to is folks. That what like that is, you. passion? I love to get That's passionate. That's not like to me, brother. I love to get passionate. So in other and words, you, you don't have anything to make, show for it. He has no make, children. He has no wives that I know You can of. make no wives, jokes. no queens. No Look, queens. Oh, my goodness. You see a, when, you see a king, when you see a king, brother, I'm going to respond. When you see a king sitting next to him is his queen. Now, then the other the king that's also screwing her? That's the way all kingdoms work. You see what I'm saying? So if you're saying you're a king oh, and your crazy. women are in the background, that tells me they're not queens. That's what it tells me. Maybe he's an Arab king. <laughs> this is comedy. So yeah, you think, so you're sitting next to another guy that's railing your wife, but you think you're a king. Where I mean, did, what kingdom did that happen in? Remind me. Hey, brother, you you can make fun of the kingdom. I'm cool with that. All I'm saying is. What my women are in? queens, and the queen sits next to the king. I don't see any women with you. Therefore, your women are not queens in my book. Now, if you want to refer to a video, I'll go do video research on you so I can see you and your queens. But if your women are not out front or at least sitting next to you, then in my book and my, my definition of a king, they're not queens. That's all I'm saying. Thank you for that note. Your women are not queens. Your women are promiscuous. Your women are for Ooh. anybody. And let me let me be clear. Nice. You're trying to associate value to these women when in reality anyone can have them. Your wife said that she goes on Tinder, a dating app for young boys and girls, and she's damn near 50, if not plus. I don't know. But she goes on Tinder to find young boys to have meaningless sex with. Your queen gets... <laughs> passed around among the general population of plebeians. That's not what a queen does. Don't sit there and act foolish. You can make up lies, but in the face of this kind of intellect, it's clearly pointed out. You're Man, not sitting next to a queen. You're sitting next to a common whore. Oh, <laughs> name calling. May I ask an um, open-ended question? Yeah, yeah, for sure. A question, guys? Since sure. you guys are having such a fruitful conversation, it's really cute, by the way. I wanted to ask if you um, feel that kings, and when I think of a king, I think of a person who is in charge of themselves. I'm king over my ego, over my animal. Wait, you're king? Yeah, I'm a king and a queen. I'm, oh, I, we God. talked about this last time. We're masculine and feminine. You are masculine are you and feminine. Parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system. You have both right and left brain. You are made up of both masculine and feminine. You came from a woman. And then you came into a body as a masculine, but you have feminine energetics. That's what causes you to be able to nurture. When you do have children, you will do that. What I'm sharing right now is that I'm wondering when do kings in the United States get together? To me, we need to be forming empires. If you have a king over here, a king over here, you just have a hood fighting bloods and crips. When are these men going to get together and take care of all women and all children? When is that going to become necessity in this culture where everybody's complaining about the government and the man, what are you kings doing for us? Where is the community of men to care for the community of women and children? That's what I want to know, because that's empire. That's that's a very positive statement. I appreciate that, King. I thank you for, for sharing that. It's a very lovely thing to, to share. I personally don't agree with the concept of everyone being a king. I think that's just dishonest. Um, but I think you're right in that we do need to collaborate societally uh, to make sure that children are cared for. And in our way, each man should care for their own children and everyone should be within a community wherein we can be respectful and support one another in doing so. But undoubtedly, I have no real interest in taking on the children of other men. Osman writes, peace and love respectfully would like to know does kenyatta and i i don't think you're is your, your name's not kenyatta is it it's, it's okay it's kenya right yes okay i just want to make sure he didn't know something i didn't know the lady's name is kenya i'd like to know does kenya distribute her old dry box equally to you and him i'm just reading the question um so 
and Tiger, we haven't heard from you much. I, I trust you to, you're more uh, relaxed in the group. Uh, the question the saint asks you is, uh, is Kenya distributing her old drive box <laughs> equally to you and uh, Carl? So I'm not certain what she means by distributing. Um, it's, not, <laughs> I mean, it's not rations. I mean, if a person decides they're going to have sex with somebody, they decide to have sex with them. But to put it in those terms, is well, right? Sounds like she like pa- she pick it up and pass it out. <laughs> you just walk through a line and she's just handing it out. Here's your serving. Here's your serving. Pussy for you. Pussy. For you. I think what she's asking. I think that in our culture, people think of women as like cows or horses or cattle. And it's like an ownership of a thing or women as things like a woman is a box or something to pass about. Or yeah, I, I don't think they think of women as humans. It's similar to the Catholics and those who enslaved Africans. They didn't think of African people as humans. So they're a thing. And let's distribute the work of that thing or the labor of that thing. And let's degrade and humiliate that thing. And so if we're doing that as black people to each other, that's good for you guys. I don't do that. So. I will say uh, two things, and then we'll we'll carry on. One, the history in Africa is clear that slavery was an institution throughout the continent, which is to say this is something that was practiced by Africans. And because it was practiced by Africans, that's why it was easier for the Europeans to engage in what today is called the transatlantic slave trade, which I like to call enslavement, uh, which is to say that the African aristocracy sold other Africans Also, when you would be in war with another nation or another tribe in Africa, the POWs were also were often made slaves of. Now, undoubtedly, African slavery versus European slavery is wildly different. And African slavery, you were not born as a slave. You see, whereas in European slavery, if your mom was a slave, slave, you're a slave, too, by birth. So that was uh, one of the differences. But I do want to point out that from a historical truth perspective, uh, Africans did enslave other Africans. But the question I think is getting at this simple thing of, do you gentlemen have intercourse with Kenyatta, vagina and penis? Uh, What? Oh, I'm sorry, I said Kenyatta. Uh, Kenya, um, at the same level of frequency, like if if you go in three times a week, does Carl go in three times a week as well? (laughs) Well, like I said before, that's a stupid question. There's no chart up there that says, okay, today's your turn, tomorrow's my turn. There's nothing that says that. If a person is deciding to have sex with the person, they're going to do it at their own frequency. There's no rationale to say, okay, you're going to have more than I'm going to have it, or I'm going to have it, you know, less. It's not even a question that, you know, I, no disrespect. It's, sure, it's, sure, sure. it's just a curiosity thing. <laughs> Well, the the only reason that I would perhaps to you all who are engaging in it, it may sound ignorant, but to one who has never engaged in this with human jealousy and scarce resources, she can only have, theoretically, she would only have sex with one guy at a time, uh, according to what I understand of your setup, then, you know, they're just trying to figure out. Correct. That makes sense. No, I love that question. Now, that's a real question. How in polyamory do people move past the insecurities and the jealousies that Western culture uh, promotes in its citizens? That is what we have come up with. That is what Progressive Love Academy is all about. That's what our 14 books are about. We've done 14 television shows, 700 articles, 400 um, placements on podcasts. That's what we teach. We share with people how to get beyond the confines of the Western mind, which is very limited in its thinking and how it situates itself in relationship. So those that's what we're experts at. Thank you for pointing that out. And the lady to to your left, I your name, Miss? Karina. Karina. Yeah. Would you tell us a little bit about how you all do get past the the jealousy or or like feeling like this is my man? Like what makes you open to sharing him? Is it just because you get to have other dudes or like, you know, what opens you up to that? So I think that especially amongst the four of us, there's just open communication. So if I'm feeling a way, I have the ability to talk to Kenya and she will support me in finding out why it is that I'm feeling this way and healing what needs to be healed within me. I have the ability to go to my husband and be supportive in how I'm feeling and you know, acknowledge that and have the ability to heal 
you know, whatever these issues are. It's not to say that the jealousies and the insecurities don't come up, but we have, you know, a network of communication that allows us to deal with that when it comes up. So give an example, and I say this because this is what, uh, this is not how I get out, you hear me? So I am, just as much as the viewers don't know a damn thing about what you guys got going on, same thing with me. So what would be an example of something you would say to whomever when you're feeling jealous? And then like, what's kind of like the, the resolution of that? Sure. So we come up, we created a system. I, I, wanna, I don't want, oh. Oh, you can answer as well, Kenya. I don't want to interrupt you, but I'm just curious yes. uh, from the lady, but I do want to hear from you as well, Kenya. So um, just like Kenya was about to say, what, what happens is in, in our communication system, what I will do is I'll go to my husband or go to Kenya or go to Tiger, whoever it is that I want to vent to. And I ask them for permission to vent, you know, will you hold space for my vent? And, you know, once I get that consent, then I let them know this is how I feel. This is what I'm experiencing. And then they ask me what form of support would soothe me, would soothe my ego in that you? space. Right. And so then um, once I'm asked that, I let them know what it is, what specific form of support I want. And then they give me that. Once we have the ego soothed, then we can start talking about how did I create a scenario where this is my experience? When you say I, you're talking about yourself. Yes. Okay, that's dope. You you yeah. put that book fair to bring it closer. So the yeah, that's the up level communication framework. Bring that closer to the screen so they can check, so they can see that. <laughs> <laughs> that's the up level communication framework. It's bad. You can't see it, but that's our oh, book. Good. There it is. Yep. Yeah. That's, Up that's Level Communication by Kenya Stevens. Check it out. She describes her communication framework, which uh, if you manage in multiple people in a relationship, sounds like it's a it's a good system and it's working for them for multiple decades. Kenya, you were going to add in on that one uh, before. Oh, I was just sharing. Remember last time we used that and we started to have our conversation flow better, you and I. But I was saying that I would respect anybody, man or woman, enough to ask consent to vent. That's what I call it, consent to vent. Don't just walk up in somebody's face and start venting. Second thing, I would always ask for the soothing I want. I think men get upset with women because we're so emotional sometimes, but that is because they don't know how to soothe us. We are not even asking for it soothing. We just want to keep vent, vent, fight all night. We don't do that. And so when you talk about these men as kings, I see them as kings because they know how to hold space for that. And we don't approach them in that nasty way, in that old Western way. Put it gotcha. like that. We have our own oh, system. please forgive me for uh, failing on your name again, Karina. 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 Sorry about that, Karina. I, I'm a I'm gonna log that in. Uh, Karina, are you also with uh, Tiger and Carl? No, I'm only with Reckon. I'm not with, with Reckon. Okay. I didn't hear the last part. I said I'm not in a relationship with Tiger. So you and Tiger have never had sex. Tiger and I have had sex. But you're not in a relationship. Correct. Does that mean like we had sex and I didn't like the sex or like I don't <laughs> like him? Or, like, what what made no, it not that evolve? Means that he and I as two consenting adults decided to have sex with one another. Uh -huh. And we chose, we opted out of entering into a relationship with one another. Was the sex not good? <laughs> the, the sex, sex is delicious. <laughs> I'm just trying to see what that tantrum do. You're so, so, so I have a question for you. I, I have sure. a question for you. Like, All why right. is the focus sex? Like, that's why, a great question. To answer you your said, question, you said before that you I was know Kenya is sex. like sex focused, but like you're constantly talking about the exchange of fluids <laughs> and who's doing what with their genitals. Like, why is the why is there not? more focus on the relationships that we have with one another versus who's fucking who and how good it was. That your whole question? I don't want to answer that. Okay. So your question for me is why is the focus on sex? Yes. Okay. This is a part two. In part one, we were talking to Kenya. I trust that you've seen part one. In part one, there is consistent discussion of sex from Kenya. We're learning about her way, her life, what she's doing. And there was that consistent focus. So that's what I've understood of it. And that's where the conversation has been centered as this is part two. And that foundation 
was from Kenya. And if you've seen part one and you can't ascertain that, then that's not something I can influence. But this is part two from that. You see, if you actually have uh, checked out my channel, you'll probably find zero videos about sex. I've never purported to be a sex therapist or a sex expert or anything like that. So what you're experiencing and hearing is a reflection of the foundation that we've come to discuss. And further, the quotations that I've given you from Kenya have been about sex. And the Kenya is the alpha in your group. She's the leader in your group. And this is centered around her. That's how the other three of you have appeared here. And that's where the foundation came from to answer your question. And I asked you about if you have intercourse with both of these guys, because this is a question I know people viewing are curious about. And so I ask it, do I care? No, no. Do I find it entertaining to hear you answer? Absolutely. But do, do I care? No. Um, but it's a necessary question to ask. And so that's my answer. Tiger, what's on your mind? Everything's always on my mind. So I guess if um, I have to ask any question of this whole thing, um, I guess it's going to be about the value of women. You keep talking about because a person has sex with a woman, she's all of a sudden lost value. Does that also go for yourself? Do your women lose value because you've had sex with them? Or do you make them appreciate in value? Do they gain value because they've had sex with you? Tiger, that's a very thoughtful question. And I appreciate that. I've heard the metaphor many times that a key that can open any lock is a master key. But a lock that can be opened by any key is a shitty lock, which is to say, well, a woman that has a high body count surely is not valued and undoubtedly is not valued in this society. And I think we could all agree that if we took a poll in any land, be it in the West or in Africa, where I've traveled extensively, or in Asia, where I've also lived and traveled extensively, or in the Middle East, where I've also traveled extensively, or in Latin America, where I've also traveled extensively, in any of those lands, we said, does anyone admire or revere a woman who's had her draws busted by a whole football team? Undoubtedly, people would say, hell nah. If you put it on the reverse side, you say, does anyone respect a man who has been with many women, and I, I don't promote that. By the way, for the record, I don't promote men sleeping around with many women. I don't promote women sleeping around with many men. I think what we agree on is relationship is important, uh, love and connection is important. I think we do agree on that. But the fact is that around the world, it's reviled for a woman to be loose. And it's almost admired for a man to be good with women and to be able to sleep with many women, whether he does it or not. We have affectionate terms called playboy or player. We have figures like Hugh Hefner, James Bond. On the other side, the analog doesn't exist. We don't have a figure of a woman who sleeps with many men and is regarded well in any society. And there is reason for that. It's because it's filthy. And because when it occurs in a natural society without technology, nobody knows who their father is. And it leaves the kids uncared for. And the biology also shows that men produce semen over a lifetime. We can get women pregnant at 80 years old, but eventually women will not be able to get pregnant, which is to say the female's value is declining more rapidly over time. And the female is wiser to be monogamous because when she's pregnant, she can only be pregnant by one man at a time. But I could have a thousand women pregnant at the same time simultaneously. So the female biology is such that she would be wise to be monogamous. And that's why that is what reigns in human society for women, monogamy. And for the strong men, the alpha men, well, they get to have more women. And for the weak men, they have no women or they share women. Okay. I understand I that. No, no, that, that definitely makes a lot of sense because I too have traveled extensively around the world. Mm -hmm. I've got you know, multiple passports to just show you. I've been places. I understand. So what you're saying absolutely resonates with me. It makes sense. A virgin has apparently more value in most men's eyes than a woman who has been with multiple men. I get that. And I get that when you talk about men wanting to know who the father of the child is, that absolutely makes sense. Me, me personally, I would absolutely want to know that the child is mine. But 
So may I ask you another question? Please. Why don't you have children? Is it because they don't want to have children with you? You're not valuable enough to have children with? Is that your whole question? That is my whole question. When I have children, I would like to be in my children's life. And I would also like to homeschool my children. You know, my training is actually as a teacher. So my first job that I did was as a teacher. And I taught in Baltimore, Maryland, and one of the worst schools in the whole country. And I saw terrible things. And so I've always wanted to homeschool my kids so they can get a really good education. And, and the way you guys live, I bet you all have values that you want to convey to your children as well. Yeah, we homeschooled. Yeah, exactly. And so I don't know how much we can relate on the level of business that we do, but if you had Googled me and you still can, you'll find that I've opened offices uh, for my technology corporation in, um, and let me know if I miss any cities, uh, in Springfield, Missouri, in St. Louis, Missouri, in Petoskey, Michigan, in Chicago, in Baltimore, Maryland, um, in uh, San Juan, Puerto Rico, and Seoul, South Korea, right before the pandemic, I was in China to open an office there, which is to say, when you're living like James Bond, and you're moving around so many places for business, and you're doing it at a very high level, and you're managing not only yourself and your women, but also a corporation, and you're making it such that other people can feed their families, Mm -hmm. That's a big responsibility for me to say, okay, I'm going to have my kids and focus wholly on them. Right. So I'm not saying I, I didn't have the money to do it or the time to do it. I did not make the decision to do it. So when I decide to do it, it's going to be on my own campus of real estate that I own. It's going to be in my own schools. And it's going to be on my time. But to me, that's in the evening of my life. Mm -hmm. I still have so many things that I'm working on. But to answer your other question, which was, have women found me worth uh, procreating with? I think it's a passive aggressive question uh, in as much as you and I both know that women will have kids with almost anybody. That's why so many people uh, are without fathers. You see the black community, 70 percent illegitimacy. And you and I both know that everything about me is top notch. I mean, like you can just tell if you have common sense that undoubtedly there are a lot of women who would like to take my seat and have tried to. But me yeah. as a strategic wise man, I've protected my seat. But if you want to know my stats, I mean, you can Google me. You can see my athletic background. You can see my intellectual background. My pedigree is A1, and I would put my pedigree up against yours any time. And if I think if we lined up a whole bunch of women and said, who would you rather procreate with? I think I would win. And what I call this is being direct because you were being passive aggressive when you were trying to underlying suggest that women wouldn't want to procreate. It's just a silly thing. You're so right. I'm trying to be direct to a man. Okay, I apologize. So man. you only fuck with escorts, then, is what you're telling me. That does really. That really? Seems, that seems silly. Did you? You just? I feel like now. Before I was like Tiger. Seems like a more rational, calm, thoughtful guy. But now that you said escorts, it just seems like you're really trying hard to be insulting. And insults are best when they're accurate. That's when they sting. But when you say things that are ludicrous, no one believes it. And it just doesn't have any relevance. Like, for example, if you're sitting there and you're like, you're fat, people will be like, what the hell are you talking about? And that's kind of what you're doing right now. It just sounds silly. May I ask a question? Please. Uh, um, well, I'll just on a side note. And I, I would like the same amount of time if you get, because you like answer questions for four minutes. So you're right. I would really, you know, that's share fair. as well. We, we're on your show, so we'd like to share too. Um, so one one side note that I'll say is you were saying that the question seemed passive aggressive or um, it was insulting, but that's what this show seemed to be about. When you say somebody's box or there's draws or there's a wet panties or somebody's ran through, those are all insults, beloved. So I'm not sure. I thought the format was that we're doing zingers or something. That's your style. So if it comes back to you, by all means, a king would be able to deal with that by, by if that's how he. Oh, that, no, I, I was just I, saying. Now, wait a minute, I'm not done. Now you're jumping in and I'm asking for the same amount of time that you have every time you answer. So my second question and my second thought around this is we've homeschooled our children, three of them. Mm -hmm. One of them is in his fifth year as an IT major. We've, we run four companies. We, we employ people all around the world. We have our uh, credentials. We are um, doing good things in our community. I'm wondering why you would put, why you would want to have us in a firing ground back and forth. We have a lot to build on together. 
And there's you're saying that maybe you wanted to do this because you felt like having me on your show alone, which, as we know, it, it was an interview in the email. And then it was a debate when you said later on on another survey. I get that. We're doing this over because I felt as if why would you put a woman on a seat in front of you when you know you're going to fire insults, the same ones you just said you couldn't handle and don't like? But it's going to come, you know, you would put me on a seat by myself without my family to set that up and then turn around and say that, you know, I'm requesting another interview. Of course I am. This is what I come from. This is my community. You show me another community where they're I'm raised Tiger's child. The child is not by me. It doesn't matter who see this another woman's child. I don't care. I love her, too. I just got her an apartment. I will pay for her an apartment because that's the mother of my husband's child. I've raised Rakim Sekou's children. I, I, uh, your children come to the house. We take her children on vacation. Now, you show me another African-American family doing this besides fighting over baby mama drama and not getting along. You need to send those people to me because we have worked out community. Talk to me about this. Thank you for sharing that. And I do want to acknowledge if the things you say are true, I think those are beautiful things. And I think that you should definitely carry on. And everyone has a wisdom to share. You know, even if you walk by the street and see a homeless person, they're not without a wisdom to share on life. And the truth is that sometimes the wisdom of, is of what to do, and sometimes the wisdom is of what not to do. And I think that you are very clever at cultivating the media. I think you're wise to be an author. It's a great piece of media to sell. And I trust that there's some wisdom in your books. And the reason I know there has to be something meaningful about communication is because you can't have four people getting along over time and sticking together without knowing something. So I grant you that. I think that you have a lot of value. And that's why I'm enjoying the conversation. And I think that in time, uh, people will be able to pick that up. You know, where there is value, intelligent people will be able to see it. With regards to your earlier comments about me not uh, liking the um, passive insult. aggression. Yeah, you said insult, but really it's passive aggression. I actually love snapping, you dig? Because I had the unique experience when I was a kid, I didn't get made fun of. So no one ever really picked on me. So I actually enjoy it when people crack jokes on me. I like to crack them back. And what I was saying is as a man, uh, Tiger, uh, he was passive aggressive. And so I, I restated what he said. And then I explained to everyone, this is what he's trying to do in terms of insult. And this is passive aggressive. I said, here's my direct aggressive response to you, which is to say that as a man, we need not beat around the bush. We can come straight forward and come straight for people's throats. And I like when you come direct with mine, especially as you said, you got your degree from the streets, which I'm wondering which school of hard knocks that was. You did, because from where I'm sitting, you don't seem a fiat issue. Um, so I don't know who certified you, but uh, you might have to come through my school and get recertified. So that's all I was saying. I actually love jokes and, and snapbacks. But point is, you uh, also reference the African-American community, which admittedly, I don't really get into that. To be honest with you, the philosophy and the way of life that I share is so impactful. This is for all of mankind. Mm -hmm. And as you know, mankind started in Africa. That is all of our origin. So as long as we can all respect that, I respect all of the, the creations on the earth under the species category of human. Um, so I don't really get the African-American bit, to be honest with you. Um, but certainly I've had a lot of my work with African-Americans, whether it's any of the nonprofits I founded or the nonprofits I've raised millions of dollars for or the teaching that I did in Baltimore as well as Philadelphia. But I do want to let you know I, I have a lot of respect for the work that you stated that you do. I think it's a beautiful thing to see people taking care of one another. And I do want to commend you for that. And I hope you don't think or no one watching thinks that I don't respect or I dislike you guys. Um, I like a lot of things about uh, each of you and not to say people won't disagree because uh, we damn sure disagree on the core things of, you know, man and woman. Okay. We have Mr. Lucario. He says, shout out to Marquette and the Progressive Love Academy. Shout out to Mr. Lucario. He's actually a YouTuber. And I think that Mr. Lucario would you know, also respect a number of uh, the oh, way I know him personally. 
I've worked with him. We've done this for 17 years. So I know most of the influencers. I hadn't heard of you, but I knew I've known Mr. Lucario for about 12 years. Well, you hadn't heard of me, but I'm the money man. You heard me. I'm the man that's been in technology. I haven't been in uh, internet. Uh, I've okay. been I've been in technology, which is the but most cutting edge field. You heard I me. I don't, when I introduce you. myself, I never say I'm a YouTuber. I say mm -hmm. I'm an inventor of a technology. And when I die, my casket is not going to say YouTube influencer. It's going to say technology inventor. You heard yeah. me? Yeah. I think we're all on the same team. And in terms of what is an alpha man, in my view, not that it matters because I'm a woman, but an alpha man or an alpha human is a person who takes care of his entire community, is a person who does not disrespect others, is a person who knows how to um, cultivate relationship and connection. An alpha man is going to want to take care of everybody. There's no alpha man who would want me on a firing block by myself. There's no alpha man who would want me to be just depending on him. And if he died, don't get with none of his brothers. Don't get with nobody else because I had sex with him. An alpha man doesn't think that way. An alpha man is not insecure about a woman having sex with whom she wants because he knows he's the shit. He's not worried. So I think of beta men as the men who get worried about women having sex or they don't want a woman to have sex because what if another man dick is bigger? What if this is happening? I feel like alpha and, and, and beta have been switched around in Western culture to support maybe men of European origin who feel and are, you know, sometimes betas more likely. And so they changed the definition and now it's something different. But the alpha man takes care of the entire community. An alpha man does not disrespect women or put women on the firing block and call her names. That's just my view. Kenya, you're very clever with your words. You're clever with your words. But the sad thing is that you often <laughs> reference things that are just not true. For example, oh. you seem to paint Africa in a matriarchal way, which is not the case. And you never reference any scholars or any works by legitimate historians when you say these things. So you're assigning things to European culture that you can't rightly assign to European culture. You're assigning things to African culture for which you've provided no evidence. Further, you're redefining alpha and beta to suit your lifestyle and your narrative. It just mm. doesn't add up and we won't agree on redefining words. And the reason that I categorize you with the leftists is because they're very good at redefining words to make their odd thoughts and their strange behaviors make sense because they want to feel normal and they want to appear normal. And to this point, Blue Lotus asks, he writes, firstly, I'm a thousand percent male. What African system did Kenya speak with her ancestors? And I think he's referring to the last live where you said your ancestors told you a lot of things. One, they told you that the baby you had with Carl was actually not Carl's baby. It was the baby spiritually of a guy that you met at church. Um, and so they're wondering, like, what system do you use to commune with the ancestors? Oh, it's comedic. I was um, raised in the Alcereset tradition under Ra Unefra Men, who um, initiates humans all around the world in comedic or Egyptian tradition. Egypt is a Greek name. Comedic is com Kemet is the name Kemet, of Egypt, yeah. actually. So um, our tradition, we were initiated for 11 years in the Alcereset community. Does he know about that? that answer. It's Kenya, not Kenyatta. You right, it's Ken I was reading the, so the read yeah, Kenya. no, I did read Kenya. It, her name is Kenya Stevens. We have Brian Colato, he said, Peace to the Assassin, may all the saints stand up. We have Drug Hours, he said, Peace to the Saints, it started at eight years old. That's all that I need to know. Respect to her views and way of life, but we got to the root of how it started. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we have Faith Foundations that I feel very sorry for their children having to grow up in that environment mm. where their mother got multiple guys coming in and out of the house. Very sad. Mm. <laughs> are, are these guys around? Uh, are the guys that you sleep with around your kids at all? Well, all my kids' friends would come to our house because their parents were divorced and there was no man anywhere around them. So they would come to our house actually to have the attention of powerful men to help with homework, to help with finances, to help them get to college to help them learn about relationships. So yeah, you're I- talking about, uh, You're talking about um, Carl and Tiger, or you're talking yeah, I've been about- married to, I've been married to Carl for 26 years, and I've been married to Tiger for 10 years. So I don't know many people with relationships of that length, and neither did my children's right. friends. I think okay. that's a really good point. Um, I'm just trying to clarify uh, for the questioner, um, the not Carl and Tiger, because it does seem as though you all 
do know each other. You're familiar with each other. You, you share a, a way of living, a way of communicating. The guys that you're sleeping with, would those guys be around your children or any What of guys children? that I'm sleeping with? These are my husbands. When I have boyfriends or other partners, if they earn the respect and the right, they all have to meet my husbands. But I don't have guys that I sleep with that are just people to sleep with. We're not swingers. Swingers sleep with people. I formulate relationships with men. I cultivate men and I support men in accomplishing the things that they want to accomplish in life. Because I, I have some facts and the quote was, quote, I meet most of my men on Tinder. Most men I date are younger. Why not? My husband is older than me. So I already have an older guy. I need a younger man, end quote. Right. Tiger's 10 years younger. My husband's five years older. So I have an older guy and a younger guy. I quote. Well, you referenced and Tinder. I, you yes, I, Tiger I'm, on Tinder? Tinder. I'm on Bumble. I'm on all of those sites. I'm always looking to formulate new relationships, new friendships. But just because you go out with somebody and want to have fun doesn't mean you're sleeping with them. But if I'm sleeping with somebody, they're my life partner. Seems like you're backpedaling to me. Oh, no, I have lots of partners. I have a partner in Atlanta. What do you mean by partner? Because I have partners too, but they're business partners. So if we could be more precise, and I find that consistently there is so much blurriness with your language, which seems like an effort to confuse. And often we find this with false prophets is that, you know, they speak in metaphor or allegory. So no one really understands and you can never pin them down. So if we could speak with some level of precision and diction, I think that we can gain understanding if there is indeed any meaning to be ascertained. I would love to. I have um, um, Instagram posts that go back 2011. We have 14 books. So speaking in terms of what we say, you can read it. You can find all of the articles. You can find us on Dr. Phil, Monique show. You can find our YouTube channel. So there shouldn't be a contradiction. What's happening here is that we're not having an interview. This is a debate. So nobody's asking the right questions. Yes, I'm on Tinder. Yes, I'm on Bumble. I just had a date this weekend with somebody from there. I love going out. I love meeting new people. I'm just now empty nesting. My children are gone. I'm going to go have a lot of fun. But that doesn't always equate to sex or intercourse. So when you say the men that I'm sleeping with, I don't know who that is. Those men have to be vetted. If they're going to be around my children, they're going to have to be vetted by my parents and by people in my community. And today are ready for that. Nobody who just meets me is ready to sleep with me. I'm sorry. Fair enough. <laughs> hey, Jimmy, are you there? Um, it looks like you're muted. It looks like someone tried to join the call. Hey, Jimmy, if you ever uh, <coughs> notice, just go ahead and uh, unmute yourself and uh, we'll let you join in. Uh -oh, I, tried, I tried to add him. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, the other one, so in your view, do you think you've healed from your issue with trying to be a man? Oh my gosh, yes. That's what I was sharing that my ancestors shared when I had cancer. Um, at age 23, I had uterine cancer. And I know that uterine cancer is a fight with traumas that you've been through, being ignored by father or being not... Whatever the traumas you have, they're going to show up in your body as quote unquote illnesses. So my ancestor told me that I was acting too much in my masculine side. They were saying I was not vulnerable. I was angry. I would not ask for support. And that, those types of things I've had to heal in order to survive. Gotcha. And do the husbands have Tinder as well? Or how, how are you guys getting your women? And also for everyone, this is, so two questions. One, do the husbands have Tinder? And then two, uh, on your Tinder profile for all of you, does it say that you have uh, two husbands or whatever your, your relationship status is and how are people reacting? Yeah, I'm not on Tinder, so I don't know anything about that. Yeah, I'm also not on Tinder. Uh, if I'm going to meet somebody, I'm going to meet them through my day to day activities. You know, I meet a lady in the coffee shop or, you know, meet somebody at the bank. Just, you know, wherever I'm at, you know, I can meet somebody. I'm on Tinder and it says I'm looking for friends and that I'm polyamorous and to Google me because you will find thousands of articles on me. And, you know, I'm poly. I got two husbands. You're going to have to meet them. And I'm just I love fun. Like I love going out. I went out all weekend, y'all. They stayed in. I go out. <laughs> I love to dance and party. And I'm not on, I'm not on Tinder either. Got you. And, oh boy. That's, have either of you guys been pegged? 
pet. Hey, maybe you can break that down. What's Wait, that what experience that? like, brother? No, that's that's a good question because I just learned about this word a week ago. Uh, peg means sodomized, essentially. Uh, but, maybe you can no. break down what that feels like. I don't know anything about that. Okay. See, because you're you're actually the one that's pretending the most, Carl. Because when you were on the last call, you were interrupted, and then you pretended as though it was all good. Like you're acting masculine, but everyone knows that you're actually the feminine one. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> I mean, break down what it feels like to get pegged. So we well, I, think, I don't I really know what that's like. They're so suggesting you question, since that's something that's well, they all asked, they asked you. Since that's, I think since the that's something, are we going to go back into that again, brother? Because we can talk over each other. I yeah, asked you, you asked me a question. Yes, you I'm asked me a question, and I'm now I'm coming back to you. Yes. Since pegged is something on your mind, in your cipher, in your mental sphere, uh -huh. maybe you can break down what that is and what it feels like, so I can properly answer the question. I think you may have heard me, but I'll repeat it for you. Being pegged is a question that was asked in the comments for you. And you picked and out in red. Just break it yes, down, for your brother. Yes. It was asked to you, and I surmise they asked you if you'd been pegged because you seem like a candidate for such a thing. And let me make sure I give you the precise definition. So I'm just going to go ahead and look up definition of pegged because the accuracy is. But not. was that not passive aggressive? You seem like a of candidate. Of course, it's passive. Wait, hold on, hold on. The same thing. No, no, no. That's <laughs> right. You know what it is. It's break down. How did it feel? How does it feel? Try, try not to clap because this. You're not using it's a not mic. Not word I use. The clapping is just. It just adds to the noise. So if you could contain yourself for a moment, uh, right now, Carl and I are talking. Talking man to man. Brother, don't try to act like this is some kind of intellectual show. That Carl we're and I are talking man, man to You have to man. look it up in the dictionary. Pegged. This is this is a colloquialism. Pegged. A man who receives a strap on dildo in the ass from a female. And I think that they would think you would do something like this because you're being run by a female. That's why while I'm talking to you as a man, she's getting in the conversation when it has nothing to do with her. You're being addressed. So you don't need your protector to show up. She can sit silently while you talk because it's your turn. And you're saying you don't know what getting pegged feels like because I have no idea what that is, brother. But since you brought well, it up, that's, that's, that's your mind, answer. I'm just thinking maybe you can just share why those things are subconsciously inside of your mind. Why do you want to bring up being pegged? Is that a thing that you're looking forward to or that you've done? Or Carl. What is up with you, might, you might learn from Tiger in that when you remain silent, people can't tell that you're a fool. In your case, you choose to speak and you reveal your idiocy. You've just suggested that being pegged was on my mind, but as you clearly saw, it was popped onto the screen. It was a comment written by a viewer. And you it brought was it up, brother. Hold you on a second. Don't interrupt. You mentioned not interrupt. I can interrupt whatever you the fuck I want. Don't tell oh, me you're what angry you're now. Oh, you're Dude. mad now. You brought up you're mad now. And I told you every time something hits deep, you see that anger come out. It's not passion, it's pain and anger. And the reason you you're in this pain. weird relationship is because you are weak and you're taking scraps. You're taking what you can get. You're not taking what you want. And what I teach is always go for the top. And you failed at that. And because you're a bottom feeder, feeding on scraps and leftovers. You know, and you call it a main dish. That's the problem. You've got a sloppy Joe and you've confused it for a filet mignon. But the problem is you're angry right now. And it's like, why don't I'm you not you angry? I want you to be down. direct, brother. Why don't you just relax and calm down? I want you to be direct. That's what you preached on the show, right? They are right. Female pimp right here. Well, I don't know if we can call her a pimp. Do you, you guys don't sell your butt. <laughs> uh, these guys don't sell their butt. So I don't think we can call her a pimp. Um, well, actually, you guys work. Who works for her? Because I remember she says one of you guys work in her business. Yeah, we're all partners together. So, well, in her words, in the last interview, she says, and my husband works for me. That's not what I said. I said, Karina works for me. She runs my No, company. we actually have the last interview and we've re listened to it. I'm going to take it down, but to be straightforward, you said, you said one of my husbands is an investor. And, and my other one works for me. me. She didn't say for. And, I, and I watched, I watched the, the debate. And further, and he would like for me to say that. that. No, he would like for me to say that. And so further, I'll say, his wife so let me help you. Who's so the CEO like of the company? <laughs> let me help you. Who's the CEO of the company? Which one? We have four. <laughs> Who's this? Okay. Oh, you have four companies, dude. Yes. Okay. Tell me, tell me who are the CEOs of your four companies? 
We each have one. He's CFO. I'm CEO of Progressive Love Academy. He's CEO of Psalms. She runs the Blue Butterfly Women. We have thousands of people in our systems and networks and thousands of subscribers. And So in which company were you referring to one of your husbands working for you in? I said Karina works for me. I never oh, said my husband works for me. You're lying. Lying. That's probably why you want that interview now because now you're lying. It's all good. We'll go on to the next one. Oh, my husband works for me. I work on me. National Geographic and seeing the lamb hunting the lions. Dudes look like they're being held at gunpoint. Okay, great. Uh, wonderful. So, brother, <laughs> <laughs> back to the original point. <laughs> I'm Gabriel, trying to share this point you brought up. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm I'm really curious why you brought up Peg. Like I, oh, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll answer your question for me. I, I'll answer your you question. Brought it up. It, it, was, it must have been here. on your mind. I just want to know. You keep repeating yourself. Be silent. I'll answer your question because you. Uh, you can't tell me to be silent because then I'm not going to be silent because you, you don't yourself. run shit. You keep so repeating just yourself. Answer just answer the question silent. and I'll be satisfied. Yes. You, when I look at you, I see tremendous weakness. And when I hear from you, I also see weakness. Okay. And the truth is, you look and strike me as a weak, weak beta male deceit. And that's why I read that question, because I knew they had identified you rightly. And I will never forget how in that first interview, when I addressed you as a man, you were too scared to speak back to me as a man. You let your woman talk for you, and I have no respect for you because of that, and I view you as a weakling, and I would crush you if I could. And that's you, why, no, I, and that is why I read that to you because it speaks directly to your nature, and that's why you are so hurt by it because you know you are deeply feminine, and I'm that's why you're in a situation that's why you escaping the question. I'm hurt by you escaping the question. I'm hurt by you bringing up these sexual things, but not acknowledging that you have something going on inside your mind, inside your subconscious and your heart around these things, but you don't want to admit it. You're acting like, oh, my listeners ask me those questions, but you're the master of ceremony, brother. You're bringing these things up. I want to know like, how you really feel about homosexuality, how you feel about getting pegged. Because we didn't bring that stuff up. This is not us bringing it up. This Gage is right. Shouldn't us. her? Shouldn't at her age the maturity have the maturity to handle monotony? You might need mon monot oh, I think maybe she's saying she likes to yeah. go out a lot. Um, just because we can doesn't mean we should. Kenya is currently off screen, so we can't address that to her. But too much to go out. Talking podcast. He said, "As a black man, I'm embarrassed. You can't mm -hmm. make this player Satan Center show no mercy." Mm. Sure, I would love to answer. What Satan. was the question? Essentially, the, the, the saint wrote, at your age, shouldn't you have the maturity to handle monotony? I surmise it's in reference to the fact that you just like to go out so much. Oh, I love to party. I'm a party girl. I really enjoy dancing. I love house music. I'm from Detroit. We, we created house, you know. I really enjoy my lifestyle. I enjoy my life. I've raised my children. I did a damn good job. And it's time for me to have some fun. That's what women of my age do. And that's all that I'm doing. I'm glad I have the money, the time, the resources. I work for myself. I don't have to be on anybody's clock. I'm not clocking in. I do what I want to do. So I enjoy my life. That's a good answer. I mean, you're entitled to that. And no, I don't want monotony because monogamy is monotony. I don't want to have sex with one person for my entire life. That's ridiculous. Who does that? Nobody here on this call is monogamous. Monogamous means I sleep with one other in my species for life. That is the scientific definition of monogamy. No one here is monogamous. We all have several partners. We dump them, get with another one, dump them, get with another one. Maybe they cross over. We don't tell them, dump them, cheat on this one, dump them. Y'all are not playing games with me. <laughs> and women yeah. are telling y'all their body count because they're embarrassed and they're ashamed that y'all are going right. to run into them and you guys are going to degrade them. I'm just not afraid, so I speak the truth. But best believe, all women that you know have my same body count and we love it. <laughs> you know what? You know, I my mother told you. me before she um uh, left, uh, she, she hasn't passed on, but before my grandfather passed on, my grandmother said, because uh, I told her I was polyamorous. She's Christian and everything like that. And she said, you know what, Kenya? Come over here. Let me tell you something, baby. Every time your grandfather cheated, 
I cheated right back, but I never told his ass. And then now he's on, out in his grave and he don't even know. Let me tell y'all men who think something wrong. Let me tell you, if I walk outside right now and, oh, a hundred men, I, if I ask them to sleep with me, they will. You guys don't know what a woman does. Women is not going to tell you what they do because you're not allowing women to be authentic. You're degrading them so they have to lie to y'all. And you guys are believing the hype. Women can have sex any day of the week, baby, all day. And you guys don't know what they're doing because they won't let you in, baby. They're not yeah, sharing I, that with you. I agree that. Be honest with you. They true. don't want to hurt your little egos. You're speaking yeah. some truth for a, a, a significant <laughs> portion of females. I, I think you're representing things accurately for a, a meaningful portion of the female population. Uh, I agree with you there. I appreciate you sharing that. Um, we'll, we'll definitely have to make a clip of you sharing that that game because men do need to realize that. Um, Ernesto writes, Carl is the epitome of all those light skin memes. I read this one because I, I do want to say that as far yes. as like color of people goes, um, however I might feel about the way Carl's conducting himself, I don't want to throw all fair skin people under the bus. And I think we should probably uh, stay away from this kind of thinking and talk um, because it just draws unnecessary divisions between us. Um, so I, I just want to kind of like uh, point that one out. I agree with your underlying meaning, but you know, we don't want to throw the the Drake colored folks under the bus just because they light skin. Uh, you guys have any thoughts, questions, uh, thoughts or comments on that one? I Not the point about that. Carl, but the colorism part. The colorism part? No. I think you handled that so well. I because, a little passive aggressive, but. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fruitless. You know. Uh, these men decide to come on YouTube and talk about how proud they are to be feminine. This is ridiculous. <laughs> uh, why do you think so many men are staunchly against how you guys are living? And, and I imagine I'm not the first person to say you're weak and you're a beta male, right? I, I imagine you probably hear this a lot, mostly not to your face, but you, you get this kind of communication. So let me ask you a question to answer that question. In your opinion scientifically or just what you think, do you feel there's more alpha males in the world or beta males? Not speaking scientifically, but factually, by definition of the concept, there are very few alpha males and there are a great many beta males. Okay, I would agree with you on that. And so by definition then, and just being fair, I'm just not just your show or anybody else's show or my show, but in fairness, based on that analysis, most of the men commenting and calling me that probably fall in the beta category, whether I'm beta or not. Like I could be beta. That could be a fact. Right. But the fact that there are very few alphas and mostly betas, probably 90 plus percent, most men who are commenting are probably in the beta category. And because they're in the beta category, they feel better about themselves as men to call somebody else beta because it kind of brings that person down to them. That's my answer. That's what I think it is. Okay. I'm remaining silent. I don't know if Tiger, I wanted to hop in there or anybody else had any notes on that one. I don't want to hop in there. Okay. Yeah. I think that's a, a reasonable <laughs> response. And I think that can apply to a lot of times people insult others. And I think there's also that you know people might sincerely be disgusted by your position, and also per beta, you know there's levels to everything, right? You know even among alphas, there's some who are more alpha than other alphas, and then environment is a factor as well, right? Like for example, if we were in my office and you came into my office, I'm the alpha because I am the CEO of that business, and maybe if I go into your environment. I'm not the alpha, which wouldn't make me a beta, but I'm not the alpha because I'm not dominating there. So there's levels to it. And I, I think you're right. At the end of the day, it really doesn't enhance any of us to insult people. But undoubtedly, we do sometimes encounter our ideological enemies who are living in ways that we're staunchly against. And if we let their vision spread or their way of living spread, then we're doing a disservice to ourselves, our children in our way. So we have to fight it. So I think both of those make sense. The Red Pillager writes, stir without being stirred. Marquette is still patient and respectful. People who are unshakable about their beliefs never take things personal. Peace to the saints. Osman writes, please, bro, be gentle with them. They need professional mental help or an exorcism. I'll pray that the almighty Allah 
break that woman's evil spell. Dang. Now, this is actually kind of interesting because they went to the mental health piece of it. Have And I remember you did say you, you had a therapist, Kenya, which I'm not accusing you of being crazy or anything like that. But, but have you ever questioned, I am living way out of line with the majority of people. Maybe I'm a little thrown off. Yeah, I have that. That's from a person who called and referenced Allah, who promises 75 versions, 75 versions for the person who kills, who kills somebody on the other side, 75 versions. And I need a therapist. They, they, they throw it out 75 of them things. <laughs> I need a therapist and I really do um, 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 go also to coaches as well. I think everybody needs support. When I do, when I work with my clients, I support them in healing from childhood trauma. I support my children with that. I support other people's children with that. People entrust me with their teens. As I said, I have thousands of clients. And yes, I also love support. I will go to anybody. I love going to Karina, my friends, other coaches I pay, because I always know that I'm here for growth and I can never stop growing in this entire lifetime. And I love to do personal growth work and self-development. Absolutely. May I, I believe that 75 versions were waiting for me after death. I might get a double dose of therapy. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, if, it's, if they got 75 virgins, I'm sure. Sign me up. But look, mm -hmm. I do want to acknowledge all four of you for being brave enough to show up, number one, number two, to continue, and then number three, to put your private life out in the public. Uh, I think people sometimes forget when they're watching television or any kind of entertainment that you guys are real, real human beings with real feelings. And, e and even as much as I might go back and forth with Carl, um, I still have a baseline respect for Carl as a human being. And I, I wouldn't want anything bad to happen to any of you guys and uh, don't want to hurt you, even though I might not agree with your way of life. And I want the, your way of life to be marginalized and forgotten about. I respect you all as human beings. And I hope that um, no one does any weirdo stuff or, you know, just like, treat everyone with respect. Like, I just want to be clear about that. These are human beings. I'm a human being. And it's very brave to put your name out, put your way of life out and to defend it. So I do have a lot of respect for you guys on that regard. Um, even though I don't agree, I respectfully disagree. And I hope that we can all be on that uh, same level. That's awesome. Oh. Uh, Michael writes, Carl, the saint does box. Oh, Okay. Oh, I, he's talking to you. He said, Carl, the saint does box. You know what? I was nice before boxing too, Michael, for the record, but I don't think Carl wants these hands. He know better than that. He don't want that. He don't want that work. There's no way in hell. Dennis writes, as a younger man, I would never follow these men as leaders, saints. Peace to the saints. Uh, do you guys have, who, you guys have sons, don't you? Yeah, I have two sons. How are your sons on, like, did people pick on them out in the public or on IG? Like, how have they, what's their experience been like this? Uh, pick on them from, I'm not sure what you mean. Yeah, yeah. so cyber bullying or even in-person bullying, like, hey, man, your mom getting railed by everybody in Asheville. Like, are they being picked on? Because when I was a kid among African-Americans, uh, if people knew your mom was getting ran through, they gonna have something to say about it for dang sure. Like you ain't about to slide because black folks will pick on you even if it ain't nothing really wrong with you. You hear me? So something aberrant like that. Oh yeah, you ain't gonna slide. Well, I mean, from my standpoint, I haven't heard any of that. My kids go through that. They haven't mentioned that. I haven't seen that. Um, but again, when you look at the black community, brother, it's just like who's really gonna say something about what's going on at home? You see what I'm saying? Like not so many people have a leg to stand on. So they're not really going to be coming after their peer group in that way. Maybe pick on something else like your hair or your clothes or something like that. But they're not really talking yeah. about, you know, oh, you got two dads in the home or you got a whole community of people in your in your crib. That's whack. Like they're not really going to come for something like that. And your sons, are they of the mindset that they should uh, have a woman who's only with them or are they basically living in the way that uh, you folks are? My oldest son is monogamous. Uh, so that's, you know, he's going to probably be married to his current girlfriend within the next couple of years. Um, my youngest son, he's not really in the dating world that strong yet. So he's in uh, high school, but I'm, I'm sure he would be monogamous out the gate without a doubt. How many sons do you have? Two. And Two. one more with tigers. Sure. So you're a hundred percent of your sons are di deviating from your way. 
how does that make you and obviously as i said before i don't have kids so i don't know how that feels so i'm asking you out of like as you're a more mature man than i am age wise and you have this experience i don't have i'm curious because i feel like i would be pretty disappointed if i believe in a way and my sons diverge from the straight path how does that make you feel and why do you so it's two questions how does it make you feel and why do you think that happened uh no i feel good about it so um i want my children to choose their own way um so I don't have any particular feeling around it, but usually that's how children are. They, they choose a different path than their parents in some way, shape or form. Um, but yeah, I think, I think it's cool. As long as they're happy doing what they want to do, I'm all for it. I'm not somebody who pushes polyamory or open relating. I don't push it out there. All I, my message to people is that it's an option for the right people who have the maturity to do it, who have the emotional intelligence to do it, who, you know, to me, again, in my opinion, brother, but who are in their alphaness enough where they're not going to get, you know, uh, insecure about their manhood based on what another woman is doing outside of them. So you have to be in a certain place, uh, mature wise. you got to be in a certain confidence at yourself as a man uh, or a woman to do it, in my opinion. And I wouldn't push that on on most people. I don't think most people are ready for an open or poly situation. So when my kids choose monogamy, I'm all good. I just want them to know that, hey, human beings are not monogamous. Um, you know, so when you have feelings of attraction for other people, that's natural. It's best to talk to your partner or your wife or your husband about to make sure that you guys are not hiding from each other and lying to each other, which is what most couples do, which is why the divorce rate is so high and, and most relationships actually fail. Um, so as long as they're doing the communication thing, I think they're good. But I, I'm, I'm not concerned about them following the polyamory open way. Thank you for that sincere answer. Simba writes, sorry to say this, but this is Jezebel in her physical form. Kind of moving off, like uh, rooting from this um, note here. Is it your view that the male and the female can pretty much engage sexually at the same volume and there's like pretty much nothing wrong with it? Like they're the same. There's a level of equity. It's so like, hey, it is what it is. Or do you think that there's some difference between the way male and female should be uh, conducting themselves? I know you want to say something about that. Me? Sure. Um, well, no. I mean, so you're asking me that, brother? Sure. Uh, it's, it's an open one. I'd be curious. To, like, I definitely am enjoying your responses. Um, yeah. I mean, biologically, um, there's, there's an answer biologically. So... From a biological standpoint and physiological standpoint, um, a man can't match a woman sexually. So a woman, she can literally lay down and have sex with 500 men back to back to back and, you know, keep going until, you know, whenever. But a man, you know, we actually have a, a limit in terms of how long we can have sex, how often we can ejaculate, that kind of thing. So biologically, the female body is built to have more sex than a man. Um, in terms of people making the choice to do what they want to do, my belief is that, um, you know, per hopefully people are educated about sex. Like I believe in sex education. I believe that you should understand Tantra, energy work, the various aspects of sex before you kind of get out there and engage sexually. So if it was up to me, I would do sex education for like teens before they kind of get out in the world so that they know how to manage their whole sexual thing. And I think if you're the master of your own sexuality, then it's up to you how to do it. So if a woman wants to have if a woman wants to have sex, you know, every day with multiple men, then she can do that because she's like the master. If a man wants to do that, then he's the master. I think it becomes choice. But physiologically and biologically, a woman is built to have sex, you know, every day, all day for her entire life. I think, you know, so there's definitely science and we could get into the science of things. Undoubtedly, a lot of the science dictates that the vagina is not as rugged as you're describing it as and becomes infected and has a lot of issues with, you know, health when she's being enjoyed by multiple men, especially on the same day. There's a lot of research on that. And further, um, as one who has let me uh, not end up being DJ Vlad on here. Let me say, I, I, heard, I know a pimp named Slickback, you dig? I know a pimp named Slickback and he used to run some whores. And I can tell you that based on this firsthand information from a pimp named Slip, Slickback, um, females, when they're humping all day, 
will definitely experience some unfortunate consequences of that in terms of uh, bleeding and tearing and things like this. So it's not quite it's not quite accurate that the female is able to engage in copulation at, at that kind of a volume. Can but I ask you a question? When I'm finished, yes, undoubtedly. Um, so un so the point is that. Uh, it's not quite that durable, but to your point of if they needed to go back to back to back to back, yes, a female is going to outperform a male at the back to back to back all day, every day. You're right there. Now, the question I was kind of uh, getting at is the libido and the drive, you know, like the drive to do the volume. And the science indicates that the male drive to be indiscriminate and screwing as many people as they can screw is much greater than the females, whereas the females might have more depth to their sexuality, but they're not indiscriminate about who they have sex with. And uh, the male has a larger hypothalamus, which regulates the sexual drives. And it's three times bigger than that of the female. So when you find a female who's humming so much, it's clearly an issue that either A, she's an outlier, which is possible, but improbable, or more likely that she's reacting to trauma. And I will yield the floor uh, to Kenya. Oh, gosh, I forgot my question, but I, I, I'll remember it. Um, I was going to ask this question about men and talking about female sexuality. Why are all of you guys talking about female sexuality? Y'all don't know nothing about female sexuality. And the biggest thing is we have babies like we had y'all. You know, we are mothers. So we if, if a 15 pound baby is not going to give me like blow my blow my back out you all are always talking about blowing backs out with a one pound 0.5 right. pound penis and we have 15 pound you see how tall this man is six three i had three of his babies are you kidding me and nursed them and fed them from my body for i, I nursed my youngest son for three years I nursed these children. I took them through homeschool i walked them to school i did all this stuff i got them to college are y'all serious when, when do men come off telling women what to do with the with our bodies? We're mothers. We don't want to have a cycle every month. Okay, y'all don't know anything about the female body. So to talk about it without showing something on the screen that you have some type of backup, I don't know what y'all are talking about. I, I'm, I get lost in these conversations. <laughs> like 15 pound babies. It's That's nothing to have to my penis is going to my, to my vagina. I'm sorry. No, I think you're right. I think there's a lot of exaggeration among men thinking that they're pleasing women more than they actually are. And one thing I always let men know is that if you're going to fuck something, fuck her mind, which is to say that the mind is the true treasure. And that gives you the greatest access to all the value the woman really has. Kevin, wait, wait, formerly wait, wait, known as Swiffer, uh, Swiffer wait, Wetjet, writes, peace to the saints, the power of words only lay in the truth you refuse to unveil within yourself. You you want to say something? Yeah, I was gonna say that you ju we just got on one page, Marquette. You said that fuck her mind. You said that sex is not just about the penis and the vagina. You agree with me that sex is about the mind, the spirit, the body, the soul, our connection to all things and beings. Thank you. We are hooking up here, Marquette. <laughs> That's my man. Uh, can we not use the N word? Uh, Gentlemen, I I know I slipped up, slip up every now and then and use it, but I prefer not to be called the N word. And also, if we could not call other folks the N word, uh, it is appreciated. We do. Uh, we have oh, Jan Case, and in the first video at the and they gave a timestamp. She said one husband works in her biz, writing books with her. The timestamp doesn't matter. The video is being deleted, but someone did go back and ah, gotcha. The so someone sent in the and verified the verity of my words, which was that you said my my husband works in my business, and I was correct, speaking the truth. And oh no, I thought you said that you said my husband works for me. I you never say, said yeah, that. You, you, you said husband. I said my husband works for me. I never said oh, that. Oh, I okay, okay. It works for me. Works in my business. Are yes. those not the same things? Oh, all, no, we have four businesses. He helps my me business. My business. My is the possessive. My is the possessive indicating ownership. I have, a, I own a business. He owns a business. Okay. <laughs> we have four right. businesses. We won't play with semantics because I think the problem is that you have a tr you have trouble admitting when you're wrong. Essentially, we're saying that <laughs> you are trying to be the leader of these individuals next to you. And 
that's the reality, but the pretend meaning out of everyone's mouth is that we're all equal. We're all the king of ourself when really uh, there's only one person with a penis in, in that group of four. And that's just the thing about it is that it's perception. So even the way you said it, it takes away the humanity. If you say that my perception is there's one person with a penis and I say my perception is everybody here has everything that we need. It's the point is the perception. You're saying that there's a reality and a lie and there's no lie. There's no, the no point is that you are a. And that's also in up level. If anybody cares to know, it's also in my book that our perceptions, it's all about perception. I, I trust there's some people who are going to want to read your book who are uh, watching this. So if you put it a little closer when you put it to the screen. Absolutely. So people, and I respect your perception, but my perception is just as valid. So everybody's perception is valid. And, and by the way, that's a good looking book cover. That's a really good looking book cover. Well designed, very professional. My uh, husband I did. Acknowledge that. Oh, who did? Tiger or uh, yeah. Carl? Oh, damn. That's you did that. That's quality, bro. Shout out. Yeah, that's good work. Anyways, um, you're speaking of perception. That's a game. You know, people can say, oh, you're entitled to your feelings. I'm entitled to my feelings. You have your perception. I have my perception. No, nah, you're lying. And I was pointing out the truth. That's what it is. But it's very common among leftists and especially among feminists who are, you know, creating these alternate realities where they can be right even when they're wrong. Right. Ernesto, he said, I don't call myself either an alpha or a beta. My light skin comment was a joke. However, most men, and I mean like 99% most, would never share a woman in this regard. It's unnatural to the natural makeup of men. That's correct. Hour and 45 minutes, so we have to go soon. We don't want to do... Understandable. Hours. Understandable. Hey, are there any closing words that you all want to share? Any closing message or anything that uh, you need to let the people know before we head out? Anybody? Yeah, no. Uh, thanks for having us on the show, brother. Um, you know, it's been a unique experience. I'll say that. And um, yeah, if folks want to check us out. You can check out our books on Amazon. That name of the book that Kenya held up is Up Level, spelled U P L V L, communication. Uh, you can get it on Amazon. And my husband has 14 books also on Amazon, written by himself or me and himself. Also, follow us at Progressive Love Academy on Instagram. When you say my husband, you're talking about Carl. Yes, Carl has helped me write the books. Okay. Uh, Tiger is our CFO, so he's a finance okay. and trader. Got you. Uh, Karina, did you have any last words or anything you want to say? Um, I, I, I will say that I do appreciate that though there was not a much higher level of respect than yesterday, I do appreciate the fact that there was a higher level of respect shown than there was yesterday. I'm not sure I understand. What don't Would you, you I think I got... I, so I, think I appreciate the fact that when I watched the show from yesterday, there was a high level of disrespect. Okay. I appreciate that today there is a higher level of respect than what was shown yesterday. Ah, okay. Understood. Thank you. I just want to make sure I understood you. Thank you for sharing that. Tiger, did you have anything? I just want to make sure everyone has. No, I just want to say thanks for the uh, the experience coming on. Um, if you felt my comments were passive aggressive, I was not intending them to be. I don't want you to think I was attacking you. Uh, it's all love, you know. Um, and thank the the viewers for their comments. Definitely some uh, interesting questions out there. I just wish we could have got a little more in depth into the actual yeah. lifestyle versus um, more of the attacks that there seem to be. Well, I definitely at a number of times said, hey, what's on your mind? There was a time that I specifically said, Tiger, what's on your mind? That would have for sure been the opportune time to say, yeah, I want to talk about, you know, this, this and this. So I did try to provide that space for you. I definitely understand what you're saying. And there's just is undeniable. Like, yes, we are diametrically opposed in some ways. And that came out. Um, and I <coughs> want to let you all know, I don't take you all to have any ill will toward me because you all seem like genuinely peaceful people who like to be happy and are not seeking to spread evil on the earth intentionally. Um, but 
Um, for me, I don't have any ill will toward you all. I have a lot of admiration and respect for your unity, for the length of your marriage. Uh, I appreciate the fight that's in all of you. And I think that you have to have a lot of fight if you're going to live differently than most people. So whether I call you beta male or weak or whatever, to say that you don't have fight would be a lie. You have a lot of fight. You're very tough, very durable. And I think there's a lot we can learn about communication, about enduring relationships, uh, about business, about marketing from you all. And I appreciate you all coming on and sharing this uh, moment. And uh, you know, maybe at some point, I'm sure we'll be passing through the same space. And if nothing else, we'll be entertaining to sit down for a meal. So um, (laughs) until next time, and uh, I'll make sure that uh, we keep our word on what we said we're going to do, take down the first one uh, right after we get off. So we're going to do that right now. Uh, You guys have a great evening. Everyone who tuned in, thank you for being here with us. Peace to the saints. Peace Peace to the saints.